Welcome to eVision Live, your broadcast on self-healing and potential development with Dr. Alexander Kleberg and Dietrich Busaka. Welcome to your happy, happy, fulfilled life. We continue today with our theme of the month, the power of practice. And we already talked about what is practicing about um, embodiment, about healing rituals. healing rituals. And today we are going to talk really about what is learning. And we have a wonderful quote from Confucius. Uh, learning is like an endless ocean. It's infinite. It's infinite. It never ends. It never ends. And you call yourself, uh, you said in the German edition, you said you uh, call yourself a learning junkie. Yes, a learning junkie. I love to learn. And when I learn something within a day, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm fulfilled. And in my groups, I always say, oh, I learned so much. And this uh, excites me. It inspires me. It enthuses me. So this is really what I love in life, to learn. And our big dog, he says, oh, learning is nothing for me. I'm too afraid of making mistakes. And that's also our question to us. Have you ever made any mistake? If you made a mistake or not, please write down here no or yes. What's interesting when we discussed this program for tonight, I looked at the mistakes I made and they changed being mistakes. For example, I made some decisions. You when, thought I, they were good? when I made them, I thought they were good and they became mistakes afterwards when these decisions didn't lead to the result I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then I said, oh, this was a mistake. So at the beginning it was right and it became a mistake by judging mm -hmm. it if it went straight to the goal I wanted. And now after much more time and many more years I say, oh, this was, everything was all right. It was not a mistake. It was a step into learning mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and into gaining more and more wisdom about life or knowledge about mm -hmm. life. So stay here. So if you want to know more about learning and why mistakes are great and what learning has to do with health. So this is our today's topic. And so I want to start. What is learning, Alexandra? To put it very simple, learning is structuring the brain in another way than it has been structured. So learning is to create new networks in the brain. For example, there is a lot of research and one big research was about 10 years ago on London taxi drivers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they scanned their brain before they became taxi drivers and they scanned the brain maybe after half a year or so. Yeah. And they found out that the centers in the brain which are for the spatial space, the visualization of space and roots mm -hmm. and so forth. These areas in the brain became more structured. They have been more networks mm -hmm. than before. Or when you do a lot of SMS, my Taxi. children do that all the time. And there's this little board with all the 24 letters and they do it very, very fast. I can't do it in that way. And they found out that the, in the brain, the centers for the motoric activity of the thumb becomes bigger and bigger. And so there are more networks there. So this is learning to create new networks in the brain. And I wasn't brought up in that way. I was brought mm -hmm. up in a way that um, one was told the brain evolves when the body evolves mm -hmm. and it stops after a while when you're grown up. Mm -hmm. And then I think in the 70s there was this uh, research or this idea that there are gray cells in the brain and 
they die mm -hmm. with certain things with age or so forth but now we live in this very creative scientific myth which i really really love that the brain is neuroplastic and you can learn to your last day on earth and I think this is very important. I, I love to learn and I don't like days where I didn't learn anything mm -hmm. new. Wonderful. But this is great news. Huh? You can learn till your last day. This is absolutely great. For me, it was, a, it was a breakthrough to freedom. Because when you grow up and you hear, oh, it's getting better, worse and worse, when you get older, yeah. then this makes you frightened of mm. old age. And in Germany, we had a television research series about one or two weeks ago, and which said that the brain of elderly people, it gets even more creative and the right and the left hemisphere are more connected. Oh. And so there could, can be more wisdom. So if you train, your brain in this golden age it might be even better than before and they interviewed a lot of people in their 70s and in their 80s and they think that i'm much more creative i awesome. feel much more wisdom wow. i feel more joy i like learning more so there is really really hope yeah well actually i can only confirm that learning is really uh much and more getting part of my life mm -hmm. and uh, well t concerning foreign languages I learned it when I was young when you're 40 years old stop you don't learn any language anymore and while well, I still want to learn Italian for example yes, I do too and but there is our Gerald Hüter a uh, neurobiology uh, scientist, uh, scientist yes. here in Germany he says if you are 80 years old and you want to learn Chinese, what you should Don't you do? Don't go to school. Don't go that. to school, mm -hmm. but fall in love with a 70-year-old Chinese lady and go to Ching Chang Chong, and then within six months you will learn, uh, have learned Chinese. Mm -hmm. So love is a very great fertilizer for learning. To fall in love, you learn better with enthusiasm, you learn better with curiosity, when you know somebody who knows something, you can learn better from him. So that's a very, very good fertilizer for learning. So that's we had we had this episode about the uh, archetype of youth. Actually, this is uh, learning. Learning, yeah. Yes, and also the archetype. Oh, you know, child, as a child, you learn so much. Within your first three or four years, oh, you learn very, yeah. very, very, very much. And uh, when people when, when children learn to walk, mm -hmm. they fall 500, 600, 700 times. So this is sort of like a mistake, but they don't take it as a mistake. Mm -hmm. As long as they don't get punished for that. Oh, yeah. you're too dumb, you stumble and fall and so forth. Actually, they fall and then they put on their crown again and then they run. So they, they learn just by seeing that all the other people know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And they know they are human children. And if mother can do it, they can do it. Yeah. And so if we create a society where there are a lot of elderly who learn, who are joyful, then it's the best way in another age also to learn and to look forward to that yeah. age. Yeah. Great. And, li and learning should be something continuous and it's, it's not just finish doesn't finish just with college yes and in germany in schools we learn by fear mm -hmm. yes we have to look in one direction we have to focus the teacher and this structures the brain into centers of anxiety mm -hmm. and fear of punishment and that for some people it's a good way to learn by pressure mm -hmm. for me not when i have pressure no 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 it doesn't work mm -hmm. It's maybe one of the reasons we are in Germany not ahead of all the, the, the tests of the schooling tests that Finland is much better and I think yes. they have a, a much better developed uh, schooling system, education system. Yes, but they learn it differently. They don't learn they differently. Have different learning strategies yeah. and, and we are a pr still a Prussian school 
system. Yeah, no, hasn't hasn't changed and at it least. It hasn't but changed, but and, and so little children learn with anxiety and they are afraid of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And actually, we should celebrate mistakes because we can learn from them. Yeah. Yeah, the other day at our uh, home in Austria, the, the, our cleaning lady he said, her, there is a teacher in the school every kid has, is afraid of. Yes, and that's not good for learning. Actually, it's enthusiasm that's a fertilizer yeah. and not the fear of punishment. Yeah. So we learn better by that. But sometimes I have clients, they have learned so much, they've gone to the university, they have a doctorate degree and so forth, but they're sick. so. They learned something, but they didn't learn for their life. They didn't learn for their health. They didn't learn for their well-being. And these I think are life this skills. is very important. Yeah. These, these life, life skills, skills are very basic. I think self-healing is the most basic skill everybody should learn, or better to say, everybody should remember. Yeah. We have forgotten it throughout civilization. Yeah. I, I remember yeah. Vishen Lakhiani is always says, uh, when he's talking, let's see, in let's see, till 2030, we have more or less all the knowledge we need. We have in our smartphone. Yes. We have artificial intelligence mm -hmm. in there, but the, the other skills which are so necessary really to survive in this fast living, mm -hmm. uh, fast paced world, this is what we need to learn. There I remembers another story of uh, our mentor Alex Mandosian. And he says, uh, he tells always the story of the professor and the boatman. Mm -hmm. And the professor, he is giving some amount of money to the boatsman. And, and the Amazonas River. They are on the Amazonas River. So he wants to get down from A to B to, to a, a village or a city further downstream. And you know the Amazon, everything is green, the water is brown, it's very hot. And so when getting the boat, he picked up a little stone and they got onto the boat. You know, this boat, canoes, where they have to paddle, very bit unstable. So the boatsman and the professor took out the stone from his pocket and asked the boatsman, boatsman, what is this? He said, well, why is he asking me that? What the it's hell? A stone. It's a stone sample. So, uh, but boatsman, do you know what is behind the stone? There's geology behind it. Do you know geology? No, no, I don't know geology, professor. Sorry, I can't uh, do about it. But boatsman, geology is so important in life. If you don't know it, there, there is you miss some, your life. You miss your life. There's a quarter of your life missing. They continue paddling and there are many leaves in the Amazonas and the professor picks out the leaf. Boatsman, look at this beautiful leaf. It's biology. There is biodiversity here. Do you know about this? No idea, professor. No, this is just a leaf. What are you telling me? But biology, if you don't know biology, you and miss you, your life. You miss your life. And if you all together, you, you have half of your life, you miss it. They continue paddling, the stream gets a little bit faster, it's a little bit more rough, the boatsman tries to keep the boat on track and the professor is looking left and right. And, and bang! Uh, they hit a big boulder in the river. And, well, now the boulder, have, the boat hits the boulder, their professor and the uh, the boatsman, they're just, just holding to one last plank of, of wood and the boatsman looks at the professor and says, Professor, do you know what? Do you know to swim? Professor's really scared. No, no, I don't swim. I can't swim. The boatsman, then I'm very sucky. Sorry, professor, then you have missed completely your life. Your life is over at 100%. I'm really sorry. Yes. So it's very important to learn life skills. Which skills do we need? And I think there should be three uh, subjects in school, which is self-healing, which is how to deal with relationships, and how you find your vision for your profession. 
or to earn money by that. So I think this is very, very important. And uh, for self-healing, you need to change your brain as well. Mm -hmm. Because as I see it, as I view it, sickness has to do with a certain kind of rigid mindset. And rigidity is a sign of anxiety, of fear, of mm -hmm. tightness. And it's really important to widen up your brain, your thinking, to widen up your heart, to widen up your spirit, and to find new networks which work from anxiety to well-being, from the sympathetic mood to the parasympathetic mm -hmm. mood. So your life gets back into flow. So that's what it has to do with learning and self-healing. So if you're sick and you want to heal, it's important to learn. But sorry, I am afraid to make a mistake, so I rather close my eyes and I don't learn before I make a mistake. It's better to be calm down and not do anything. Yeah, but that might become very serious for your health. You always tell the story of Bettina. Then. Yes, Bettina, she has a healing path from cancer. Watch eVision Live number 10 and number 12. Yes, and I had this speech with uh, her a few yes, days ago. And she had this cancer diagnosis and she started to buy certain pills and nutrition and to, to move, to do exercises. And she really did it with perfectionism. She was really trying to do it good and to do everything perfect. She had all the vitamins and minerals and so forth. And after a month or so, the tumor markers went up and she was very scared. And she said, oh, this might be a mistake. And she did something very smart. A lot of people just change the vitamins or change the minerals or change the food and or the, the detox or whatever and she changed her mindset and she said oh i did this with so much pressure with so much anxiety mm -hmm. with so much perfectionism mm -hmm. and she said oh i have to change the mindset and not the materials i take in and she relaxed more she did a lot of exercises for joy for happiness and she did imaginations where she saw her body healthy and full of joy mm -hmm. and she worked with that for another three or four weeks and she went to the um, again to, to the doctor. laboratory to yes and they found out that the tumor marker sank to normal within so, three weeks yes and Bettina, as I, we come from a very shy background or mm, family mm. and she stood on stage for the first time a few days ago and she spoke very clearly, very loud, very authentic and she has switched her mindset. She had created new networks, she had created new learning mm -hmm. after this cancer diagnosis mm -hmm. which brought her into a much different life and with a personality that is authentic, that is rooted in her potential mm -hmm. and growing into her vision. So this healing process was really a process of deep, deep, deep inner learning. Mm -hmm. And you have also wrote a nice blog, I think, about why Errors, mistakes are our best friends. Yes, and this celebrate them. Celebrate Learn them. from them. And you find will find this on www.evisionpublishing.com. And for the other videos on Bettina, check out Alexandra's uh, YouTube channel on youtube.com slash Alexandra Kleberg. So there you find the other ones. And um, well. I think this is, we are almost at the end and once again we invite you to join our Facebook group Self-Healing and Potential Development. 
and anything else with healing and learning what you can give us on the way celebrate all the mistakes you make and maybe you write a diary or a reflection of the day what did you learn oh this is a good idea so each day what have i learned today yes so this is the exercise for, for the next week till the next uh, episode we hope to see to you again focus please on learning. leave your comments below and thank you so much for being here open your heart and start Ich dachte, ich schlafe.